hey guys and welcome to my channel in this video I want to talk about the narcissist and your dreams when you have experienced a trauma in your life it is not uncommon or weird to have aspects of that trauma or elements of it to appear in your dream now our dreams are windows into our subconsciousness and I think when we're dreaming, we're free, you know, because when we're conscious, we're controlling where we're going, we're thinking about things. When we're dreaming, we're, we're at rest. So our mind is wandering on a level that it doesn't get to when we're in our waking life. And that's why they say when we get to a certain level or into our deep sleep or REM sleep that's when our dreams can occur and that's when we're actually getting our best rest and our body is able to do the things that it needs to do as far as regenerating cells and rebuilding our bodies up for the next day that we need to use it but not to get too far off a topic as I was saying it's not uncommon so if you've had a dream with the narcissist in it or the narcissist in the new supply or reenactments of any bad arguments or traumas or situations that you and the narcissist were in or just having the narcissist in your dream and whatever is playing out in your dream, even having sex with that narcissist, it happens. So I don't want you to feel weirded out about that. My recommendation to you is actually to keep a dream journal. I keep a dream journal. And the reason why is because, like I said, dreams are windows into our subconsciousness. So we look through that window, we might be able to get some clues as to what's going on deep down inside of us. Okay, and how do we uh, learn how to decipher this? I use a website, our dream dictionary, basically, to look up these symbols. Because different colors, different animals, locations, the activities that you're doing in the dream, even what you're wearing, all these things have meanings. So if you find yourself a good dream dictionary, you're going to be able to decipher your dreams if you have some insightfulness about yourself. I use a website, a website called Dream Moods, and I'll leave that in the description for you guys. And I've been using this website for years. But during my um, the thick of my healing with the narcissist, I found myself having dreams with the narcissist, and they weren't pleasant dreams, actually. They were more like nightmares, where the narcissist was breaking into my home throwing hot water in my baby's bassinet you know it was it was a lot of creepy things going on but it was just my anxiety and my fears um, that were going on at that time because you know my narcissist um, had raped me so I had some some deep anxieties around that situation and being as though he had a criminal background and he came from a not so good area not to say that good people can't come from good areas but just me he had been influenced a lot by a lot of street people and he had done things I know but um yes it, it was acting out in my dreams so I kept a dream dictionary at this time because I was heavily into counseling and I just thought it was a good idea. It wasn't even something that a therapist told me to do, but I wanted to keep an eye on myself and to get deeper into things. So I would look up the symbol, the symbolic meaning of different things that was going on in our dream. Because just because you're having sex with the narcissist or something in your dream, not it didn't happen in mine, but if you are, it doesn't mean that you actually want to have sex with the narcissist in your waking life. And it doesn't mean that you want it to in your dream. It could mean something completely different. So things aren't always so literal um, when we're interpreting dreams as well. So keep that in mind. 
all right if you find yourself doing something in your dream that like i didn't want to that makes me want to throw up i don't want to have sex with the narcissist and then you look in the dream dictionary and it means something non-sexual they give you a non-sexual aspect and then that makes sense with you so um again i do recommend that you guys keep a dream dictionary even if the narcissist is not in your dream in your healing process because you might have a dream about going up and down on an elevator all these things they're very symbolic to where you are right now in your life and your healing and your perceptions <clears throat> and you can use that to further help you in your healing process so the other reason for keeping the dream dictionary i'm not dream dictionary but the dream journal is because it's very easy to forget your dream you ever have a dream and you know you had a dream and if you don't write it down or recount it within like the first few seconds of you waking up, you start leaving, uh, losing chunks and chunks of that dream. And then eventually it's like, oh my gosh, what did I even dream about? I can't remember it. Because you're coming to another realm of consciousness and you're slipping away from the state that you were in and everything with that is kind of slipping with it at that point so that's another reason to keep you know a little notepad near your bed so that when you do have these dreams and you wake up you can go ahead and just start jotting it down right away and then you can always go back to it and look up the symbolism and you'll see how your dreams flow throughout your healing process and and they'll probably begin to have more and more positive meanings behind it or the dream could ind indicate that you're starting to go back down or become swallowed by the trauma that you experienced with the narcissist. Like the dreams will help you as well in your healing process. And it's just another aspect of yourself that I highly recommend that you keep an eye on and pay attention to. And a lot of times people learn stuff about the future in their dream. They might dream something and the dream dictionary gives you this symbolic you know definitions of it and then months later it's coming into fruition or something like sometimes we get a heads up and we get warnings about things you know dreams are important as far as i'm concerned i give i give dreams certain kind of weight some people be like oh just dreams are dreams but no i really do believe that there are windows into our subconsciousness and sometimes they can give us forewarnings about things and minimally they give us like I said, that insight into our subconsciousness, okay? So I hope this is another tool that you guys can begin to incorporate on your healing journey and just even something you could do in life beyond recovery from narcissistic abuse. All right, because you're going you're gonna to keep dreaming here and there anyway. So it's a good idea to, you know, understand what's going on. All right? So if this video um, speaks to you, go ahead and hit that like button. If you haven't already, please um, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. I do upload videos quite frequently. I already have a very good healthy uh, playlist there on narcissistic abuse. If you want to go ahead and visit that. Um, I am a writer and if you are stuck in the healing process, I have written books to help people um, heal out of toxic relationships. I have the link to that, which is going to send you to Amazon. You can check those books out. Um, you can get the hard copies or the ebooks. I do coach. Um, I have email coaching. Um, I do Skype and I also do over the phone. So. Um, you can email Coach Lakia if you're interested in that. Okay, guys? So um, with all that being said, thanks for tuning in. And until next time, take care.